Okay, good morning. Hang on, let me do that again. That didn't work. I don't mind. Okay, good morning. Um, do you sell on eBay and you know you want your own website that dreams your own website? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna cover absolutely everything. Um, and I mean everything we're gonna talk about. Can it work? Does it, is it viable? What the costs are? How do you drive traffic? We're going to talk about it all. So if you're sick of being a slave to eBay, if you're sick of huge fees, worried about suspensions over nonsense, um, you know, anything along them lines, well, then today's film is going to, uh, you know, cover absolutely everything related to getting your own website. And I'm not going to just tell you what to do or how to do it. I'm going to show you and show you it actually works. So, where do we start? Say good morning to everybody who's joined me. Good morning, morning, Baron. I got loads and loads of pages um, to go through. And I'm going to start off talking about eBay. Now, I started eBay probably a year or so after its uh, conception, after it was created. Um... So I'm going to talk about the pros of eBay. I'm going to talk about the cons of eBay. Then I'm going to move on to the website. And then we're going to talk about how to create a website. Because I want to outline the problems with eBay first, in my opinion. I want to outline that and show you that websites work. And then I'll show you how to create a website. So I'm not going to just go in and show you this is how you do a website. I'm going to actually show you and prove to you they actually work. So first thing we're going to look at are the pros and cons for eBay. Now, when we start with the pros, and there are some pros. eBay is a massive institution. It's already established. It's got a worldwide customer base. And let's be honest, it is easy. You just photograph an item, it's up for sale. That is the biggest uh, pro for eBay. Um, all the tech stuff's done for you. You, got, you don't have to do any SEO work on your images or nothing. You just literally upload the photographs. And I'll be honest, you can make a very good living on eBay, providing you incorporate all the fees and costs and all things like that. Um, and I know that because I've done it. I used to take a thousand pound a week on eBay. So I know you can make good money on eBay. So I'm not saying you can't make a good living on eBay. This is for people who are interested in taking control of their own life. Now eBay, as I said, is huge. It's already established. It's already got trust with people. So people go on there and they buy and they're not afraid to part with their money because they know their money's safe. That's a big thing for eBay. So they're not afraid to buy because they know everything is absolutely fine. All they got to do is a simple comment to eBay and their money's back. And I think that, in my opinion, is where the pros end with eBay. Um, if you think there's any more pros to eBay, uh, feel free to join in the chat and let me know what you think. And I'm going to look at the cons in just a minute. Um, so, good morning, Baron. Anya was, let me see, Lord. Anya first. She was the first one in, was Anya. Um, hello, Leanne. So, Cons. Now, for the biggest and most worst con for me with eBay is eBay have control over your entire business. They say whether you've got a job or whether you're unemployed. Now, eBay have this pathetic star system um, where you can have sales. It can be no fault of your own. An item can get damaged in a post. That class is as like a strike against you. Uh, people can return the item um, just because they changed their mind. You know, a lot of the time, they'll buy something, they'll be a bit short of money, they'll return it. That'll be a strike against you. You have enough strikes against you, you're suspended or thrown off. Now, I know people who've been thrown off and had their account deleted. Then when they finally got back on, they've had to redo all the work because eBay have deleted all their listings. So the biggest thing for me is control. I don't like the control eBay have. And I got away from eBay a couple of years ago, and we'll talk about all that in a bit. But I'm pointing out the um, cons a minute for eBay. Um, and with that star system, it doesn't matter if you refund the uh, buyer. Even you 
as a seller, losing the money on the sales and things and refunding the postages and that, eBay still class it as a strike against you, against your performance, which is quite pathetic. The fees are very high. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details because eBay's fees change depending on the category, whether you're a business seller, private seller. But I'd done a video um, a while back and I was looking only at business sellers and eBay's fees at the time, I think, were around 12 13%, something like that. Check your eBay um, contract. It, all your fees are in there. But um, I think it was 12 or 13% of the item. Then it was 12 or 13% of the postage. Then you had VAT on top of that. Then you had your shop, shop subscription on top of that. Then you had to pay for any listings above that that you went above your shop subscription. So the eBay fees were very high. I, As I said, I used to take a thousand pound a week on eBay and one week a month was only to pay eBay fees. Um, three three weeks a month would be, you know, cost of stock, uh, expenses and profit. Uh, and then one week a month would be eBay. And before people jump on me and say, the reason eBay charge on postage is because sellers abuse the postage system. Now, I've been with eBay for long enough, I know. People used to sell stuff for a penny and charge a hundred pound postage and get away with paying commission. But eBay solved that. They solved that years ago by putting postage caps. So you could only charge so much postage per item. Um, but the fees never went away on the postage. Now, if like myself, when I was doing eBay, let's say, for example, I'd sell something for £20 uh, to America. It may be £20, £30 postage. So I was paying the 13% on £50, not on £20. Then you got to pay your VAT now on that. And that added up to a lot of money. It really did. Um, another con with eBay is they now um, depend on your performance, depends on where you come in the ranking. eBay have their own um, algorithm that promotes you or doesn't promote you, depending on how you perform, how your star rating is and all the rest of it, uh, and how other people react with your listings and how you've listed it. They even charge you now a pound, I think it is, to promote your item so that you go to the top of the, uh, the results page. So if everybody's now got to pay an extra pound to promote your item, when in all honesty it should be, if someone runs a search for X items, then it should be they they come up. But now, obviously, people are promoting. Another con is eBay is a worldwide company, yet they don't actually promote you worldwide, not unless you pay for it. There's an option on eBay, or there was when I was still doing it, that if you wanted your products to appear in America and things like that, you had to actually pay extra for them to go in their search engines. Now, people overseas, any country, can search eBay.co.uk, but if you actually want your stuff to show up in .com and things like that, then as far as I know, that was extra cost again. So these costs are adding up severely. There's also limitations on what you can sell and list. And I'm going to show you, uh, for an example, Where is it? Hang on, let me take that off for a second. I got to show you all the pictures. I've got some pieces there. Right. So if I come to here, you can't sell everything on eBay. Here is a simple model of a flint lock pistol, a replica. Um, that's one example you can't sell on eBay, yet I sold on my own website. There's restrictions on eBay, uh, truncheons, things like that. A truncheon is a piece of wood. You can't sell it because it's classed as a weapon. It's just a little piece of wood. Yet you can sell a baseball bat. Um, you can't sell a cheese board if it comes with a big knife. Um, we had a back or a cheese board a couple of years ago, and eBay wouldn't allow us to sell it because of the knife. They wouldn't allow you to sell carbon sets because of the big knife. There's a lot of restrictions on eBay that, um, you know, I didn't like. And another thing I didn't like with eBay is they don't respect or look after businesses. If you're a private seller, eBay are always offering zero listings and maximum one pound commission to get people listing. 
But if you're a business, the most you can hope for, or you could hope for, I've been off eBay for 18 months, so it may be slightly outdated, but the most you could hope for with eBay as a business is if you fit, fit it in with all their criteria, and then you'd get a bronze or silver level um, discount, so like 10% or 20% at the end of your month's bill off. But that would mean you'd have to qualify by, you'd have to have a very high rating, you'd have to have um, oh, the top seller rating, you'd have to post within like 24 hours, you'd have to list, it was a lot of terms and conditions you'd have to meet just to get that little discount. Yet with public, they were giving you know offers all the time. And let's be honest, every company, the one they should be looking after is the businesses because we're the ones that keep them in business and we pay the most. And the biggest problem, I suppose, with eBay is the amount of scams. Um, there's scams and dodgy returns. Now, there's a lot of scams on eBay. It's easy to target and they know eBay don't mess about. They just give them the money back. And I'm going to refer to a couple of examples. Nick Hills sold a front headlight back last year. Uh, brand new in the box. The gentleman took it to a garage. So he inspected it. He took it to a garage. They inspected it. They fitted it. He drove it around for a couple of weeks. Then complained to eBay that it was cracked. Now, it wasn't cracked when it arrived. It wasn't cracked when it was fitted. Either it was cracked by the garage who fitted it. Or there may have been a bump or something along them lines whilst he was driving around. But he then complained to eBay, who then gave him a full refund, and Nick had a fight for months to get his money back. And the only reason he got his money back was because he got such a powerful channel on YouTube. Now, that's just one example of dodgy returns that eBay just don't care about sellers. They back the um, buyer all the time. And they're under the impression if they back the buyer, they'll always be sellers. And then you get to the out-and-out -out illegal, which is... The new thing of they buy a product off you and they send you a brick back. And it might sound stupid, but as long as they got the postage showing the return of the item, right? eBay don't argue one way or the other or PayPal. They just say, well, they don't know who put the brick in the package and so forth. And they end up with a refund. And I know a few people who've had bricks returned or wrong items returned or people have bought Let's say, for example, a Royal Albert teapot, uh, because it's a mass-produced item, we'll use that. They bought yours. They've returned a totally different one. You say to eBay, but look, the mark is in a total different place to the one that's on my my uh, teapot, and they don't want to know. So that is the biggest problem with eBay's scams and returns. Hello, Dave. Where have I been? My uh, daughter's been really ill. I understand he earned on YouTube from the view count. But that's besides the point because it should never have happened in the first place. Um, eBay should protect the sellers as well as the buyers. But eBay and PayPal, i got to be honest, and PayPal, they both have a policy of... They, they waited towards the buyer. And it's, it's everything. When you add it all up, the costs involved, how hard it is to get your items seen and sold, and the scams out there, the risk that eBay can flip a switch and you're out of business, it's everything. That is what drove me off eBay. And I was on eBay for a long, long time. But then... What do you want in life? Do you always want to be on eBay or do you want to build something that can become a future for yourselves? And that's another thing, you know, it drove me to the um, website line. And as I said, I'm not going to just tell you to go down the website line. I'm actually going to show you my results I'm going to show you my page views and things like that. I'll show you how to make money off it. It actually works. I haven't been on eBay for about 18 months since I've had my own website. And I will prove to you that it works. So what I'll do, we'll, I'll show you my website, show you the views and things like that, and show you that it actually works. And then we'll uh, talk about that and how you can make money. And then we'll look at uh, driving traffic and things. So if I share here, 
Now, I've had the website about 18 months. I'm not going to show you um, the orders because all the people's details are there. However, if you look just here, it tells you I have got 216 orders. Uh, processing one, which sold this morning. I haven't shipped yet. It's completed 214 and only one failed order. Um, let me just check. I'm sharing. I messed that up earlier. Right, yeah. So, 214 orders in 18 months. And it's probably in a 12 month. Um, because the first six, eight months, wherever, I was building the website, building the trust and so forth. But at the same time, my stock is not your average stock. The type of stuff I sell, um, as a rule, is this. A set of car badges, £300. Um, a costume jewellery brooch, £120. A dagger, you couldn't sell that on eBay. Uh, a bayonet, £300 I had for that. There's another restriction. You couldn't ever sell that on eBay. I can sell it on my own website. Sold that for £300. A bowl, Crown Derby bowl. These are sold prices. These are all out of stock. This, these are part of the 216 sales, £175. £450 for an Elkington charger. So there's another one there. This painting, if you remember, come in from Splot, I think, for about £4, £3, £4, and I had to have a new mount put on it, £300. So let's say it's 18 months I've had the website. It's 216 sales there and to be honest with you that's as much as i was having on ebay i challenge you if you're an ebay seller to go on ebay pick two or three of any of your items and actually go to the view count and have a look how many people viewed your item in the month and i bet some of your items will have two or three views on them in the 10 day period or 30 day period that they end some love 20 some love 30 my view count for my website. Uh, let me share it again. Where's my Google Analytics? Hang on, bear with me. I got so many things open up the top here. Hang on. Let's show you how many. Right, that's my analytics, right? Okay. That is my last 30 days, uh, 7,500 uh, visits to my website. I'm not going to show you the old page because it's got a lot of uh, things on there. And I don't know what's safe to show you and what's not safe to show you. Um, but I average, this last 30 days, I've averaged 220 visits a day, 1,500 visits in a week, 7,500 visits in the month. Um, let me see if I was to go to... 90 days, there you go, six and a half thousand there, again, you can see it's gradually growing, but it's been averaging six, seven thousands, eight thousands, and steadily climbing. So you can see I'm actually having, well, 8,000 uh, views a month now on the website. Now I know a lot of people have tried websites. I actually know a few people who paid to have websites done and they don't get anyway. They really don't. Now, I've, I've selected a few websites off the internet. Let me close these down a second. Because I've selected a few websites that I'm going to share with you. That, just to give you some examples. We'll close that now. You can close that. Right. These are not my websites. All right, randomly picked. And I'll explain to you why I'm going to show you them in a moment. So we have here uh, Patrick Sandberg Antiques. I've picked this because it looks such a beautiful professional website. All right, they got some beautiful stock and the website is beautifully laid out and they do some blogs. And it's just a really nice website. So I picked those. You can see how beautiful it is. Um, this one here was antiquecanes.com again another really good looking website you click on the antique canes antique weapons and so forth maritime All right, not a lot different from mine if anything mine is plainer 
So mine is plainer. And the reason I'm showing you those, let me just check and I'm sharing. I've actually got, there's a company called Ubersuggest. Now, this doesn't actually add all of the traffic, but it adds organic traffic. And you can see my peak of my organic traffic. It only covers um, so long because I'm doing it free. I'm not paying for it. Now, I've had 7,800 just under organic keywords on my site, which has raised 2,683 organic traffic with an authority of 21 and 654 backlinks. All right. But where is it? Let me go to the other one. You just saw how good looking those other sites were. This is that Sandberg Antiques. Now they got 31 and a half thousand backlinks, a domain authority of 27. So they got a higher domain authority than me. And all they get in is 169 organic views a month. And they've got 930 organic keywords. And that's a beautiful site. And they got a higher rank in than me. And look at the backlinks. It goes to show the backlinks don't mean a lot. Because they're having 169 people is all they do in a month. Uh, this was the Antique Canes. Uh, again, 745 backlinks. They've got a higher domain authority again than me of 24. And all they're getting is 69 people a month. That is organic, mind. And then what's this one? Ah, oh, yeah. This is my brother's. I'm going to refer to this one a couple of times, uh, simplifygardening.com. Um, now, you can see he's taking a fall at the end here because it's out of season. But at the peak of his season, which was September, he had 50,000 people in the month visit his website. All he's got is 7,500, 8,000 uh, backlinks. Domain authority is 40. But look at his keywords, 66,000 keywords. And his drove 16,000 this month. But 50,000 in a month is his highest. So, whatever I'm doing is working. I'm getting the views to the website, I'm getting the sales, and I've built the trust and the authority. Um, with Google, this class does eat. Uh, which is basically, I, I don't know the definition of it, but it's all about authority and how trustworthy your site is. Um, but I think I've shown there, you know, I'm getting the sales, I'm getting the views, and I, in all honesty, did if you do the challenge I gave you of have a look how many views you're getting on your eBay items, how many times do you have to literally relist your items for them to sell? Or... As eBay love to do, they encourage you to start it at 99 pence with no reserve. And who's that protecting? It's certainly not protecting the seller. It protects, the, it protects eBay to get the sale and the commission. And it protects the buyer to get good bargains. It certainly doesn't guarantee that you'll get the value of your items. And there's a lot of items on eBay. Um, I wanted to share this with you. So on eBay, as an example... Somebody here has put a pair of early 19th century um, double wine lip coolers, rinses, uh, on. They didn't sell at £25. They relisted up. They still didn't sell. And they're up for sale now. Yet, on my site, I sold that one there for £30. No better than what they got. And I sold that one for £30. Out of stock. What's this one? Then you look at eBay. They sold this for £20, one bid. So they've put it on auction, one bid. They sold it for 20 quid. yet there's mine, <clears throat> sold at 95 So if that's not enough proof that the websites actually work, then I don't know what more you want. Um, and I'll talk about other ways of making income. In fact, I'll show you that now before I get some comments. Because I'm going to do some comments and then I'll come back to it. But there's other ways you can earn when you've got your own website. It's not just your sales. Now, 
my website qualified for adverts with a company called Ezoic um, a couple of months ago, but my website's been built with Elementor and it is not compatible with Ezoic. So I'm in the middle of trying to fix that fault. However, as I just showed you my brother's, um, I showed you my brother's, um, is it this one? Yes, you can see there um, my brother's view count. If I was to come here, this is my brother's Ezoic account. And that's his daily income just off the adverts on his website. So he hasn't got to sell nothing. And he made, in the month, 1,817. Now, that's more than some people make in a wage for work in a full month. That is just his adverts on the website with a company called Ezoic. And you can see it here, simplifygardening.com and Ezoic. And if I'm not mistaken, when he was at this peak in the summertime, um, when he was having the 50,000, he was earning about 3,000 pound a month just on the adverts on the website. You can't do that on eBay. eBay, you're earning that off. When you go to your list and you see all the adverts, that's what eBay you're earning on their adverts. So you can get the sales and you get the commission off the adverts. So there's more than one way and there's sponsors. Uh, my brother is sponsored by Garden Centers because he's a gardening channel. He's also on YouTube. Since I'm using him, you just want to check him out, Simplify Gardening. And he has Garden Centers pay him a couple of thousand pounds a month to be the sponsor. He They give him free products to give away on his channel. Uh, they give him discounts to his subscribers. So when he promotes something and does a video to promote something, they give him discounts. There's loads of ways you can earn when you have your own website as opposed to selling on eBay. So that's really the main reasons why you would go to eBay. Let me come up here a minute. I'll look at a few of these. Yeah, she's on the men now, mate. Thank you. But three weeks. I think she had that strep A that's going around. Uh, she was really, really bad. Uh, good morning, Kieran. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Ian. Uh, right, okay. Not sure what that one was. Uh, Royal Mail, if you haven't had them, I'll send you a tracking number later, love. There's been so many strikes with Royal Mail, it's absolutely ridiculous. Morning, Peter. Uh, we're talking about eBay pros, cons, website pros, cons, and basically using the website to build your future. And I've just shown that a website works. Now, we're going to look at ways to make a website work, but I've just shown a website work. So if you haven't seen it, you've only missed 20 minutes, half hour, um, go back and watch it because I'm going to share a lot of stuff in today's video to help you create a website cheap or as good as you want. Now, my website costs a lot of money, but that doesn't mean yours has to. And I've, I've got examples to show you. Um yeah, just you'll have to go back and have a look, but it's basically all about that. You need to have a niche. Uh, my everything shop wouldn't work. I had one that was number one on Google from around 2000 as I saw person I'd ex stockings and sold a lot from it. Well, you say that, Leanne. Um, I could have pulled up a few more because I got a few friends who've got a website and all different ones. My brother's is gardening and he's earning. Mm, a fortune just on the blog posts as without the commissions and sales and the merchandise and all the rest of it um and i'm having a massive hit now bear in mind right you say it's a niche it's not really a niche because i'm fighting against ebay i'm fighting I, my my results are coming up a lot of the time above ebay above etsy above poshmark or amazon and all the rest of it i'm fighting all those so it's not really a niche if you was to search antiques there are millions of antiques on uh, the internet not to mention all the people who are trying to do antiques websites um so i don't know i think it's 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 how much you put into it and to be honest with you consistency you've got to keep battling a day no matter what happens, you've got to constantly keep going. 
How does that translate into sales compared to eBay? Well, I'm certainly having as much sales, if not more, than I ever had on eBay. I'm having better prices because people are not coming in with lowball offers with that make me offer. And I don't pay commission. I don't, I'm going to talk about the costs of the website now in a minute. But apart from a very small percentage to PayPal who handle the bank transfers and the payments, my website is, I keep um, 100% of the sales. I'm not paying 13% plus tax to eBay. Uh, and I'm not paying 13% plus tax to eBay on the postage. That's how it relates. So when I was doing eBay, I was earning £4,000 a month. £1,000 a month was going to eBay. That means if I wanted, I could earn £3,000 a month on the website and still be in the same position as I was when I was working eBay, but selling less stuff. But I'm actually, certainly as much as I was selling on eBay, if not more, and my site is constantly growing. You can see it's an upward trajectory. Uh, the more work you put in, the um, you know the more will pay back out. And the best thing with um, a website, uh, if I do a listing on my website and it sells, it's there, and there will always be a keyword to drag someone else in. Uh, if someone, because when you're searching for stuff on the internet. Let's say for argument's sake, you're searching for an 18th century drinking glass. You click on it, it'll take you to the website. Now, that glass may have sold, but I don't delete them. Therefore, it'll just be marked as sold. Therefore, it'll always be a puller. So someone may see that glass, click on it, come to the website, see if sold, and then go to the other rest of the shop and see what else is on there. But they've also come to the website, which means... They'll see the adverts. You get paid on the adverts. eBay, on the other hand, after three months, delete your images. Also, if you write a blog post, the blog post is on the permanent. If you was to just do a few hours a day or day a day a week working on a website, eventually it's going to build up, and it'll take a long time if you do it slow like that. I I can't tell you how many hours I've put into mine. A lot of hours, but it does work. And the thing is, the more work you put into it, the bigger it's going to get. And it constantly grows because you write the blog. That blog is there permanent. Nobody's taking it down. It's not like you've got to pay for it to be relisted every month. It's not like you've got to pay or maintain it. Once you've wrote it, it's there. You can forget you even got it. And that's going to bring people in month after month after month for the next 10, 20, 30 years, however long you have the website up. Then you add another one. And you got the two blogs bring them in. And then another one, you got three blogs bring them in. Same with the sold products. I got two and a half, 2,600, something like that, products on the website. Every one of those got like 10 images, five to 10 images. So if somebody searches a product, my images are all over Google. They're going to come to the website. And just because they've sold, I don't take them down. So their images are going to be there as attracting people. And as I list new, then they're going to be adding to it. So eventually, I'd like to get 30, 40, 50,000 a month coming to the website instead of just eight. Uh, you're welcome. Have a look at KirstenCuriosity.com and Leon Hill. Well, I didn't want to scrutinize Kirsten's or Nick's website or anyone else's. Because one, I haven't asked for permission. Um, and I don't know how they go in. I haven't spoke to them about the sites. So. Now, that's one of the things that I'm going to get to on driving traffic. Now, I do have a YouTube following. And it does drive traffic. But that is why I showed you the... Um, Uber suggest because that two and a half thousand um, organic traffic was nothing to do with YouTube. That was nothing to do with anything I'm doing publicly. That is just organic. That is search terms where people have searched for an item or searched for a blog post. That's why I shared with that. So I've still had two and a half thousand people come to my website this month organically who are looking for something. So yes, I would have still had two and a half thousand views without YouTube. And without being known in the antiques world. That's why I tried showing you the two difference. I showed you the Uber Suggest, which was all the organic, and then I showed you the Google Analytics. Google, Google Analytics just shows you how many people go to your website. 
the Uber suggest shows you how many people go there organically. That's why there was such a difference in the two. But two and a half thousand people come in there organically. Now, you know them, two and a half thousand people, are potential customers. Because that two and a half thousand people have looked for a specific item on the internet, found an image of mine they liked, gone to the site. That's what it means by organic. Or they've searched term on Google and they've gone looked through and I've come up in a search bar somewhere and they've come in and read an article. That is what organic means. So, yes, I still would have had two and a half thousand. A lot of the people go from my YouTube channel. I do have some that buy off me, and I'm very grateful for that, including yourself. You've bought off me yourself. Um, but a lot of people go from my YouTube channel across, go there to learn or go there just to have a look uh, because it's interesting. They don't go there with the view to buy. A lot of the things I sell are out of reach for a lot of people. Um, it's not a lot of people will willingly put £500 for a door knocker or £1,000 for a painting, things like that. And I've sold them. I got paintings on the website for £4,000. I got one chair on there for £4,000. Um, I've regularly sold paintings for four, five hundred, And they've come in organically, not off the YouTube channel. So, yes, the YouTube channel is massive in promoting my business. But... It is the keywords and the organic search is what's important. Well, I'm going to show you how to set up a website in a minute. Um, so stick around. Um, right, cost. Where am I at? I got so many pages um, and I've only got till 12 o'clock because we are going today on Brecker Mountain Railway, which is an original steam engine and we're going for a ride on the steam engine to see father christmas with my little girl because she's been so ill so i've only got till 12. right um so i've talked about the extra income you can earn there's awake sponsorships and things like that right um and it's nothing insane you can't sell for other people if you want to i don't everything on my website is mine um uh, but you can sell for other people if, you, if that's what you want to do there's nothing saying you couldn't set up a website give other people user access and charge other people commission or you know permission to sell on your site and you take a cut of what they sell so uh where are we at done then right so we're up to how to create a website now let me just close these down because I'm getting confused as hell with all the different windows open. But I wanted them open because there's a lot to share with you. I'll keep that right. Okay, so you want to build a website. Not many people have got a lot of money to do it. Um, and that is okay. They, you can go to companies like GoDaddy, Vistaprint, um, Wix, and you can design a website. They are literally just templates that are there. You choose the template you want, and it's all Dropbox, and you just make it look pretty and start selling. Um, you can do that yourself. Or if you're not tech savvy like me, I am absolutely useless, and I mean I'm useless. I paid for everything on mine, including the management I do all the listings, I do all the writing and all the rest of it. But if I got any maintenance, I pay for that. I don't do any work myself on the actual structure of the website. I'm thick. <laughs> I really am. Um, but I've done some looking for you. Now, if we come here, 123 Reg will build a website for you. And if you click on price and plans, all right, for £79 a month, for the first year, right? They will build you a light website and it tells you don't know what it entails. For £120 a month, you can have a professional website. Or for £150, you can have an enterprise website with absolutely everything. Um, they'll even write 3,000 word copywriting up there for you, um, blog pages, email addresses, you name it, it's all there, including free hosting and your domains, all included. So, it isn't something you've got to spend thousands on. And one, two, three, let me just say, I am not being promoted by anybody or paid by anybody to promote any company, right? This is just me looking to try and help. 
One, two, three, Reg is probably not the only company out there that will build your website for you. I remember Vistaprint back years ago when I tried, because I've had about 10 websites and I've never got anywhere. I've never been able to do it. Um, and then when I had the shop, I said, enough's enough. And I paid to have a website done professionally. And I spent thousands on the website. And I really did. So you can do that and spend money and have one built, custom built for you. Or you can go to one of these companies, Vistaprint, GoDaddy, or like one, two, three, Reg there, and just say, look, do you build websites for people? If so, how much? I just see an advert all the time on Facebook. Our students will build your website, and I don't know then what the cost is. I think you pay them then monthly, depending on how successful it is, but they'll do all the repairs, they'll do all the management. There are options. You can have websites for as little as sort of £50 a month. You really can. Right. And when you consider I was paying a thousand pounds a month on eBay fees, that's not bad. Um, I was talking to one of the boys down the boot sale in the summer. He sold trainers, second hand trainers and shoes on eBay. And he said he'd love to have a website. And I was saying to him, Well, why don't you build a website? And he said, Oh, well, to be honest with you, I got no following, I got no YouTube, no nothing. And I said to him, Take one day a week on building a website. I said, take one piece of stock out of 10 of your trainers and put it on the website and forget you even got it and they don't exist. I said, and in a year or two years time, you'll have enough stock on there and you'll have enough information on the website that you may be able to come away from eBay. I said, and work it up slow. You haven't got to just jump in the deep end. You can work eBay and a website at the same time. You can put cards in your eBay sales, pointing them to your website. This social media, Facebook, is everything you can use to promote your website all free. Um, a company I used when I created my website is this. And it is called Upwork, upwork.com. Now, what Upwork does um, is basically you post your job and your budget. So let's say for argument's sake, you got a thousand pound. You can write down, you say, right, I want an e-commerce website. I want it to have a blog page. I want it to have this page. I want it to have that page. I want this. I want that. I want the SEO done. And I've only got a thousand pound. And then people from all over the world will look at what you got and they'll say, well, I'll do it for that. I got nothing else on. I'll do it. And believe it or not, that's what you get. And you get probably 50, 100 experts from all over the world bidding to do your work. My website was built by a man in the Philippines. Yet I've got a man in America doing my maintenance because I use the Upwork. Um, I post my job and then the people bid and then I choose. They come, You go through all their references and look at their offers and their qualifications and all the rest of it. And what's best is you don't pay them direct. Upwork as a um, third party um, system type thing. You pay them, it's like an escrow. So you pay Upwork. You agree payment release dates, um, so plans. So let's say it's, you assume four stages to build a website. Um, you release a payment at each stage, and then you release one at the end when it's finished. So that's one way of going down. That's the line I went because I had the money. Um, I had a vision in my head, and no matter what i done, I couldn't find how I wanted it because I wanted my website to be simple because I look at my mother. And a lot of people I know, uh, including myself, were useless on computers and things like that. So I thought, I'm going to keep it simple to use, but still professional, clean, elegant. Um, I want it to be so easy to use that I'm not restricting who can use it. Um, so I went with Upwork. I told him what I wanted. Honestly, he built it four or five times before we had one that I was happy with. Then, before it was all released, we went through it and made any changes. So you can set your plans with Upwork, set how much money you want to pay, and it's done. And there's another one called Fiverr, and you can post a job on there, and you can have you can have people to write content for you. You can have pictures done. You can have thumbnails done. You can have anything you want done, and you set the budgets. Tim, I think they do them on Upwork as well. So you don't have to really break the bank. You can, and you don't have to be tech savvy. You can go to one of these companies, spend hundred pound a month, and let's be honest, hundred pound a month is not a lot of money. It's twenty five pound a week. If you're selling on eBay, you can afford twenty five pound a week because eBay's fees are astronomical. 
me do a few um the chat you got a few questions what have you got right as for how much did it cost as i i just been over that one Anya. um you can have a website really really cheap and i think um a little promotion for nick nick and andrea were paid to design a website on video view so you can actually see them designing a website um i'm pretty sure i haven't seen the video but i'm sure they videoed creating their website now i don't know how successful the website has been um but that's one way you could go and have a look and see what they've done and how much it costs with them i know they've done a video on it as for how, how long to take to pay for itself the sales were very very slow for the first six months because you have to build up trust you have to not only build up trust you have to build up search engine optimization you have to build up the keywords things like that um so it took probably six months before i was having a steady wage from the website um but now i'm earning more on the website than i ever was on ebay and i keep 100 percent of it but what i will say a, a lot of the reason a lot of people fail with the websites is because they'll create a website they put a couple of things on there and that's it they don't do no work for google they like websites to have regular changes you have to have regular content going on there you have to be active they, they need to see that there's an active website that is constantly improving and constantly growing otherwise they just pull down to the side they really do godaddy will build them for you as well yeah i do i do know there's a few of them um, that will build the websites for you I, I know that um i haven't looked them all up and i would imagine they're all pretty similarly priced you know less than 100 pound a month 50 pound a month will get you a good website um what you, i had a company called ekm they were really helpful and they're still going i'm with wpx uh they host my website they didn't build it they host it and anytime there's any trouble the customer service is absolutely bloody fabulous it really is and my hosting plan for them um i think it was it was i think it was about 70 or 80 pound a year but my website exceeded the size so i had to move up to the professional level so i now pay 50 dollars a month uh for my website hosting but they are good uh, at work yep that's at work on you yeah. work.com and the other one is fiverr.com <laughs> it may be against ebay's terms of service don't surprise me one bit but let's be totally frank if you're working on a website and coming away from ebay anyway what difference does it make um and who's gonna know i i certainly would put cards in my uh, packages if i was sending them out whether it was against ebay's terms or not i wouldn't care and that's the truth if i was working to come away from ebay um I, I don't see what difference it makes if you put a card in advertising your website but then again ebay um charge you on failed sales um i had a story not that long ago somebody um he they were selling stuff on ebay and it was a blatant scam and they'd run the price up so stupidly high then when it came to the sale they cancelled the sale and ebay still charged them for the commission because it was a failed sale and they ebay assumed they were taking it off ebay to sell privately and save the commission and ebay charged them the commission it was something like two thousand pound commission and they had to fight and fight and fight to get it back so and that's fiverr thank you for that anya uh payment processing fees is what i said with paypal it's something like two percent it's something like that two two and a half percent something like that um it's hundred percent profit on the site the site doesn't cost nothing um i'll go over the site now uh, the costs of running the site now now um but the only thing i pay if i sell something for 100 pound i'll get something like 97 pound something back 98 pound back 
it's like two percent whatever it is for paypal processing um but the paypal processing one handles the bank and two gives people confidence to buy off you because they know they got paypal buyer protection but if i have bank transfer which i do have and i receive check they are 100 percent. they don't go through paypal people send me checks people send me bank transfers um, in fact, I think uh, the Baron there, he's paid for his item through bank transfer, and that is 100% me. That doesn't get no commission whatsoever. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was a long, long. If you look at it, when Anya post up the postal date of that parcel, just for uh, just for curiosity. Uh, what if you put a website on the invoice? Surely that would be allowed. I don't see why not. To be honest with you, right? If you're not actually saying to people, well, you can buy this item off my website instead of off eBay, I don't see what's wrong with advertising. I, when I bought off eBay, I've done videos showing some of the stock I've bought off eBay, and I've always had leaflets and cards. Thank you very much. Visit our website. I've always had cards in their parcels. So whether it's against eBay's terms of service or not, I find it very hard that they would be able to police it. And to be honest with you, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. <laughs> did I answer your question? I think I did, uh, Anya. Uh, well eBay is 13% for the business rate on the antiques plus 13% of the postage. Now, I'd done um, a video a while back because eBay actually, they try and encourage you to list for 99 pence for no reserve. And if you was to sell something for 99 pence with £4.60 postage, all right, you got to pay commission on £5.60. Then you got to pay back on that, right? It actually meant you didn't take a penny for your item. If you sold it for a pound with four pound, let's say five pound postage, then right, you're paying twenty percent or thirteen percent, whatever it is, across the whole thing plus part and that. You was hardly making a penny. Um, so yeah, it's a lot cheaper than on eBay. Hell of a lot. There you go. Well. We'll leave her at that. <laughs> uh, there you go. So my parcel was posted on twenty fifth of November, and it arrived on the twenty fifth uh, on the thirteenth of December. How disgusting is that for all mail with their strikes? Sorry, Anya. Okay, so how to create a website? We've done that. Now we're going to look at the costs. And the costs depend upon what you want. Um, as I said, uh, e-commerce websites, um, or whether you just want a, a blog website and things like that, or where you, whether you want a custom-built website. So the cost will vary on that, whether you want to go with GoDaddy, um, Vistaprint, 123, Reg, or whether you want to custom and have one built for yourself. All right? You set your own budget then. What are the running costs? Right. Now, I own .co.uk and antiquesarena.com, and I think five years for the both of them, it wasn't a lot of money. It was something like £76 or something like that for five years to own both domains for five years. .com is a lot more expensive than .co.uk. You can buy a domain name for as little as a pound or two. Um, my theme builder is Isowick, and I've got to change that. The gentleman who built my website built it using Isowick. No, Isowick, sorry. Elementor getting confused now uh elementor and that is a theme builder and the downside with the, the elementor is it's not compatible with the zoic and the zoic is what monetizes your website but i pay 50 pound a year for the zoic um however there are also plugins um you have to download multiple plugins there's security plugins there's postage plugins now royal mail do a plugin that you download for your website and you can do automatic shipping calculations. So let's say, for example, you set in your weights on your product. It'll then go, when people come in and they try and buy, it'll put, they put in the destination and it will tell them, okay, well, to ship it to you, these are your choices and these are your costs. 
Well, you can have the UK one, I think, is free. But if you want it worldwide, it's like 50, 60 pound a year. So I pay 50, 60 pound a year for the worldwide. So wherever they are in the world, when they come to the website, they type in, uh, they want to buy it, they fill in the details. Then one mail plugin comes up and says, okay, these are your options. Small packet airmail, track and signed airmail, global priority, and it gives them the prices based on the weights I've provided. I pay that 50, 60 pound a year for that. Um, there are other little things. Um, there's like backup uh, plugins now you can have that are like one and two pound a year, really, or one or two pound a month rather. So nominal. There's also another plugin I pay for, which is an image optimizer. Because you're limited on the space, I think my website is like 50 gigabytes, uh, which is a big website. And I pay, because I'm lazy, I pay for a plugin to come in and compress my images down to a smaller size. So the images look the same, but they less um, less memory. So where I take a photograph with my iPhone, upload it, it may be five, 600 megabytes per image. This takes them down by... 80%, 70-80%, and that is an image optimizer, and I pay on that per images. So what I tend to do, I tend to buy 30,000 images for like 30 pounds, and that lasts me a month or two, um, and then I buy more. Then you've got the aftercare and maintenance. As I've told you, I originally paid for my website to be built. Uh, all the rest of the work I've done myself, uh, the blog posts um, that I done my own writing and things like that. I did put out originally for my because on my about me page, um, I wanted um, a really nice professional but still relatable story on there about myself and that. So I actually went to a Scottish writer through Upwork, and she charged me fifty pound and she wrote it. And to be honest, with you, when you come in, I just didn't like it, so I rewrote it added, shaken away and changed it all and done it myself. Um, and that's what's on there. But aftercare maintenance, I've had two issues on the website. Um, one major crash and they, I went to Upwork. I put in a request for a maintenance on the site and one gentleman came in who'd done some like 100,000 hours or it was something stupid. Uh, he'd catalogued and literally he fixed my website for £100 or $100, and then I had him come back and do more work for another 100 a um, bit later. So it wasn't fortunes. There's no real monthly fees other than, as I told you already, I pay for WPX because of the space. I use 50 gig. Uh, that costs me $49.99 a month. There's no selling fees other than your PayPal fee. And if I'm paid by bank transfer or check, the PayPal fee isn't even there. Um, so that pretty much sums up the fees. It's a lot cheaper. Um, I think overall, you're probably talking about £600 a year, something like that, six £700 a year to run the website. Um, I have got excessive plugins. But you can also sell what you want on your site. As I've already pointed out, I can sell daggers on my site. I can sell truncheons on my site. I can sell... You name it, I can sell it. If it's legal, I can sell it, uh, unlike on eBay. So let me just check the messages now, and then we're going to look at how to drive traffic and things like that. Um, Uh, Ron Mail far better than Herms. Yeah, I agree. They totally love. Uh, do I have any personal views on using Shopify? I think I tried Shopify. I'm sure I tried Shopify once and I didn't get nowhere with it. Um, but no, I'll say no because I don't know enough. But I'm sure. I I'm sure I had a uh, website with Shopify because I remember it transferred all my eBay listings across to Shopify automatically for me. But it has to be what you want. Um, you got a, if you've got a dream or vision in your head, write it down. 
because otherwise it'll stay just a vision in your head. Once you write it down, some clarity will come and purpose will come and you've got something in front of you you can constantly look at and work towards. When you create the website, you want to have a vision of what you want your website to look like. Uh, what's the purpose of your website? Um, is it going to be a selling website? Is it going to be a blogging website? Is it going to be an advertising website? Is it going to be a referral um, or a review website? You need your goal. What's your website about? Because then you can target your audience. Who's your target audience? Um, once you've got your target audience, then you know you can, you know, you can do whatever you need for those keyword wise and everything else. If you need to continue working on eBay, as I've already said earlier, um, you can work eBay and the website. It doesn't matter how long the website takes to take off. If you just take 10% of your stock, um, you're not going to miss one piece in 10 uh, and put it on the website to build up your shop on the website. And just do a few hours a day or a few hours a week, whatever you can spare on building the website and filling the website out. What's important is your keywords. Um, the blog posts are very, very important. My brother's website, I'll show you his website um, since I've used him as an example. Simplify your garden and come there you go. Continue, right, stream yard, share. Now my brother's website, he built this himself. He did not pay for someone to build his, he built his himself. Uh, he's just published books on there. My brother's website is all articles, so you can see it is clearly different to mine. Uh, it is all about blog posting, how to do this, how to do that, and there's merch pages and things like that, but it's very, very orientated around blog posts because his income is all about advertising and promotion and sponsorship. So you need to know what you want out of your website. And he was getting 55,000, I think it was, at his peak a month um, organically. So God knows how many views that was because my organic was 2,000 and I'm averaging eight. So theoretically, that's like two or 300,000 visits a month he was getting because he's got a YouTube channel as well. Um, what I would suggest, if once you know what you want you in your website, um, focus on it and really make your message clear. Uh, try to make your site professional, try to build trust. Um, easy to use, as I've already said, because as I said, People like my mother and like myself, I go on a website sometimes, they're that complicated. I can't figure out where the page turnover is or how to buy something. I just go straight off them. So I keep it simple, to the point, um, helpful, interesting, things like that. Now, I have got a YouTube channel and I drive traffic from my YouTube. But as I've already explained, uh, some of it did cross over in the earlier chat. You got hits which google and analytics measure and then you've got your uber suggest which are your organic views your organic views are people who come in because they've searched a keyword or they've searched for a product and you've come up in the search terms and the way to get the organic hits is by writing blog posts by having items on the sh on the stock because it's the keywords as you saw i tried showing you earlier the reason i showed you the other three sites was to show you Backlinks are important, but the one site had 30,000 backlinks and only 169 organic views a month. So backlinks, yeah, everybody talks about SEO and backlinks. They're nowhere near as important as regular content, whether that's stock, blog posts, whatever it is, it needs to be regular update content. Um, you got to register your site with Google. So Google can come in and troll your site and the Google bot then will look at your site. And then every time you click update, the bot goes, oh, that site's still working. It's still active. They update and they add into it every day and it increases your authority. My authority is 21, which is quite low. Um, and I'm still having 8,000 hits a month. And as I've said, 216 sales, which compared to my eBay, because of the cost of my items, 
is on par at the very least with what I was doing on eBay. So blogs are the best way to drive traffic. If you wanted, you got social media, you could do a YouTube channel, um, depending on where your niche is. Now, I spoke to Richie um, down the boot sale not long ago, and he specializes in Royal Albert, things like that. And I said to him, well, do a channel just on Royal Albert. You don't have to specialize in anything. Just do a channel, show them what you've bought. I know a friend, Stephen, he used to be up in London, and he used to do videos just showing his stall and what was on his stall, and people used to love looking at him. So there's ways of promoting your site and your channel. As I've already said, you can have leaflets, you can leaflet, you can advertise on social media. There's millions of different ways, but the best way to drive traffic is blog posts and stock. That is the best way to do it. I've been asked, do I sell on any other sites at all, like Etsy, Poshmark, Amazon? And no, the answer is no. My sales are 100% on my website, and I sell some of the rubbish at car boot sales. But my sales are 100% on the website. I don't sell on any other site at all. I've been off eBay for about 18 months, and I don't plan on going back. Let me see. So let me see now. Are there any questions? Because I think I've come to the end of what I was going to say. But basically, the ultimate goal is, do you want to be on eBay forever? Or do you want to build a website that you can build up to something that is substantial, self-sustaining, and gives you a good life that you own and have full control of? Or do you just want to be listing on eBay forever? Because I know my answer is, I, I'm dyslexic. I'm not severely dyslexic, but I am dyslexic on the processing side. As in, I find I can read and write, but I struggle. Um, I'm very slow at reading, and it, it takes a long time. I, I don't process it like everyone else. So writing blogs for me is very, very difficult. But when I write the blog, that blog's there forever. So if I only do three, four, five blogs a year, I'm listing on average a thousand pounds worth of stock a day. Um, so that stock then is going to bring people in. Wherever blogs I put out, they're going to bring people in, and then it's steady growth. So by this time next year, I might have five thousand items listed and double the blog list, which means I might be on sixteen thousand people visit the site a month, which might increase the sales even more. So. For me, it's blog posts, keywords, actual content on the website, regular changes, regular updates, and keep it exciting, keep it interesting, and keep it alive, basically. But if you want to dream, you know, and you want to build something, then work towards it. Because if, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, wouldn't they? But if you uh, put the work in, then you will actually get somewhere. I was asking that if you'd answer my question. I think I did answer your question, love, yes. So, has anybody got any questions that I've forgotten to cover? Because I'm trying, or if you disagree with me, I've got about 20 minutes. If you want to give uh, an opinion and disagree with me, I am no problem whatsoever, I'm not biased. This is just my own personal opinions and views. Uh, just checking. I've got through everything just in case there's any questions. Come While well, I wait for any questions, if there are any. But if you haven't visited my website, go and take a look and you'll see what I mean. I try and keep the stock interesting and I try and keep the blog posts interesting. And because not everybody who follows my channel um, is interested in how to on the antiques. I've also started a personal blog. So I'll be doing regular blog posts, updates on basically what's going on. So I, it's only one blog on there now, which is talking about my little girl being ill. We're going out today. So today or tomorrow, I'll write a blog post about today's video and about the train and going out to see Santa Claus and riding the steam engine. So I'm doing a personal blog post as well for the followers of my YouTube channel. Because they, if they want to keep up to date on just general life, then there's something else for them. So it's another element I've added to the website again. So it's not all about learning. If 
Thank you for that. Lee. Emporiums. Do you mean antique centres? Emporiums. I think you mean uh, antique centres, don't you? And if so, yes. I've got um, and the biggest one in Cardiff is the pump house, the pumping station, and there's probably 500 dealers in there, 1,000 dealers in there, something silly like that. It's like five stories of antiques. I do visit it now and again, buying. I don't try selling through it. Um, there's another in, spot in Cardiff, Tremorpha, um, which runs the auction and the um, flea market side with permanent antique stalls. And then there's obviously, I done the live video up in Resolving Market. You've got to see the size of that. So that's about what I got around me. <laughs> um, I probably put about 80 hours a week in. But that is through personal choice because I absolutely love antiques and I try to list about 10 12 items a day I try to do some research to write on the blogs every day I do maintenance every day on the website updates and things like that um, I do research on the products and obviously research for making the YouTube videos I, I am in the middle of writing a massive blog um, I think it's at the moment I wrote like two pages. Hang on, I will show you right now if I can. Um, I am actually in the middle of writing it. Not the demo sheets. And I will be the only person on Google to have it. So, let me close this. There is very little information on Google. Let me remove that on the Chinese Straits porcelain. And I have been, basically I've bought three, two or three books on Chinese Straits porcelain. And I, my phone has been reading the books to me and I've literally been taking, as this reading to me, I've been taking um, notes and important key points and things on how to identify Chinese Straits porcelain, um, things that you're likely to find. So far I've wrote like two pages on there. Um, by the time I'm finished, that's probably going to be a four, five, six page blog, but it's going to be the ultimate blog on how to identify, how to value uh, Chinese straits porcelain, and that is seriously expensive porcelain. Uh, but once that blog's done, it's taken me months because I'm literally having to read the books because I'm, I'm learning Chinese porcelain anyway, and I put a few hours a day into listening to the books and taking notes nobody realizes how much work goes on in the background um that blog will probably take me another three months but when it goes out that will be probably five ten thousand words of keywords that will draw anybody who's searching chinese porcelain anything to do with chinese straits porcelain to the website one they'll read the blog eventually i will get the adverts on there i've been approved for the adverts but as i said they clashed with the site so then I'll be earning off the adverts with the people coming to the website. Um, work it out. You earned 1,800 for 15,000 hits. So on 8,000 hits, it's good income to be had just on adverts. Um, but the blog posts take me a long time because of the dyslexia. I have to listen to the book, literally stop it, write down, rewind it, listen to it again. It really is a lot of hard work. But I put in probably 80 hours, some weeks, 100 hours a week. I really do. And on top of that, I got a three-year-old little girl. It does. To be honest with you, the main thing your website needs is trust. If they can see you're on their regular and you're doing regular improvements, adding regular content, whether it's stock or blog posts, then... It's going to build trust. They're not going to go to a website and buy some for a thousand pound that looks like junk. If the website looks like junk rather, or if it haven't been touched for months, you need to be on there regular. You need to be doing regular updates. You need to be doing regular work on the website. And let's be honest. If you want a website, make it a commitment. Put, set yourself. I'm not going to do any less than one day a week on that website. That's all you got to do. One day a week or 
five hours a week, four hours a week, whatever you can spare. But make it a commitment. Do it every week. Make sure there's improvements every week. Make sure there's a new blog every week or make sure there's new stock every week. I do new stock every day if I can, literally every single day. If I can do new stock, I do it. And as Anya will tell you, I haven't got a shortage of stock. I've got three shipping containers full. I've got two outbuildings full. I have almost emptied my garage. I've half refilled it again, but I nearly emptied my garage. And I got stuff all around the house in the attic. So I'm not short of stock. And on top of that, I've just acquired 100 kilos of silver, antique silver, which I'm in the middle of listing. So I'm not short on stock by any means. I don't need to sell in any of them man yet. Honestly, um, the website is more than looking after me. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do the video today to share that websites can actually work. Do I ever want to shop again? Truthfully, I've always wanted a shop. I had the shop for four years. And i got to be honest, I made a lot of money from the shop. But the restraints were ridiculous. It was long hours, sat there like a slave. And my new direction in life is the website. Um, by this time next year, I won't be able to stay with WPX because their maximum allowance is 50 gigabytes. And by this time next year, I'll fill it. I'll have 5,000 pieces of stock listed. And when you consider I got like 10, 12 images, I'm not limited on the images. I think some pieces got 20 images. I'm not limited on the images. So some pieces got, you know, let's say 50, uh, there's 2,600 pieces on there, 2,700 pieces on there now, a 10,000, uh, a 10 pictures a piece. By the time I get, you know, 5,000, it'll be 50,000 images plus all the rest of the images that are in the blogs and all the other stuff not to mention i link my youtube videos through my website as well so my website sends people to my youtube my youtube sends people to my website it all crosses over so by this time next year i'm gonna have to look for a new provider that will do bigger space uh, but no i can't see me returning to retail My ex eBay stuff, if it's not good enough for the website, to be honest with you, it's all going up to Madly and the car boot sales in the next season. As you know, we lost Bessemer this well last year, we lost Splot this year, we lost Bridgen this year. Most of the indoor or undercover car boot sales in my local area are gone. So for me, the season has shut down now until the spring. As soon as the spring starts, I will be selling all my ex eBay stock off up the car boot sales. And as soon as that's gone, I won't be selling on car boot sales anymore. I'll just be buying for the website, which will make life so much uh, happier. It's not about the hourly rate. Um, because, plain and simple, I can tell you now I've worked 100 hours some week and not made a penny. And I've worked then for nothing an hour. It is about working for what you want out of life. And my goal, ultimate goal is to build a website that is going to be the number one antiques website. Well, I, that's my vision in my head. I'm going to keep writing blogs for the next 5, 10, 15 years. I'll have adverts on there. Um, bearing in mind, I might not be earning it now, but once I've wrote that blog, I'll be earning off that blog for the rest of my life, off the rest of that blog's life or the site's life. So whilst I may not be earning a lot now, I'm going to use my brother as an example. My brother worked, he's still a fireman, and he worked for three years writing blogs and didn't earn a penny. And he was literally, he'd be in the bath writing the blog. He'd be in work if there's no calls, right in a blog. You name it, he'd work. He was probably doing 100 hours a week online as well as working a full-time job. And he weren't earning a penny. Now he's earning four or 5,000 pounds a month off the website and the YouTube. So it's not always about what you get now. It's about the end game. And the end game for me is keep working, keep building, and the growth will come. But at the same time, you could also look at the money I've saved on the eBay fees against the um, money I've saved, you know, which would boost up. You know what I mean? What I haven't had to pay eBay would boost my uh, money.
where are you gonna post well my library is massive as you know i've done a video on my library when i was building it yep but don't forget i've also got all the products i sell as well But again, since we're on that subject, where were you selling? Was you selling on eBay? Because I can assure you, I was doing a thousand a week on eBay, and more than sufficient to support me. But the costs, I, I just be reluctant to pay eBay a thousand pound. To be honest, do I think that's sad? Because if I had to give up reselling, I'd break my heart. Because I'm doing what I love. Um, and it, it would be nothing worse than me than have to go and work for some boss who didn't appreciate me, working hard for the company to profit, not me to profit. So, I probably earned below minimum wage for the last five, ten years, but I don't anymore, trust me. I don't sell it. Um, all my silver that goes on the website is a pound a gram. All my scrap, I don't sell. I keep it all, gold and silver. Um, if you go and have a look on my YouTube channel, you'll see I've got probably 50 to 100 kilos of silver laid around me as I'm doing a video telling people how to buy it for nothing at the car boot sales. I don't really like partnering with my precious metals. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> Truthfully, I will agree with you. Reselling is not an easy job. Um, I'll be honest. Up front. Uh, most people, they think, oh, it's easy enough. I'll just go out, buy this, and resell it. It took me, and I'll be honest, the first five years, I don't think I made a profit. I don't think I made a penny. I was learning the antiques trade. I'm, as I've already said to you, I'm sort of dyslexic. Um, so a lot of my learning didn't come from books. Um, it came from hands-on handling of things and you get stung and it took a long time for me to learn, well, to train my eye then that I could spot stuff that held really good profits. Um, so you've got to be really committed to make it work um, in the antiques world. And then on, even sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes you just need the luck. I've had plenty of people ask me to sell through the website on commission. Uh, my answer has been no, to be honest with you. My vision in my head for my website is to just keep growing it, filling it up. I don't care what sells, what doesn't sell. Um, I don't know if you've seen... Um, once I list an item, I've done videos on it. Once I list an item, I wrap it, I box it in storage and put it in a shipping container and it's coded and it's forgotten about. If it's there for six months, if it's there for a day, if it's there for two years, it doesn't matter to me because once it's listed, it no longer exists until it's sold. I move on to the next item. I never, once, if I believe in an item and I've bought an item and I haven't made a mistake after I've done the research, I never give it away because it ain't selling. That's one thing I don't do. I stand by my product. If I've done the research and the product was good, I stand by my product. I don't care how long it's there because eventually I want to build up to 10, 15, 20, 30,000 pieces of stock on that website. So I'm turning real good money. Um, yeah, eBay. I don't know. I did challenge you all earlier. Go to your eBay and look at your view count. And on top of that, right? Genuinely, right, sit down. eBay have made it hard now because instead of having one big payout at the end of the month, they take all your little commissions and your fees out of each item, right, and pay you out then. But if you actually sit down and add up how much you actually took compared to how much you actually got paid out, right, you'd have a shock how much you actually pay to eBay. On top of that, eBay have made it now that you've got to constantly relist to get your sold stuff sold. That it's really hard. You've got to pay to promote your stuff to get it sold. You've got to pay to promote it in other countries. My website's worldwide. Google are advertising me all over the place for nothing. 
eBay, I'm very anti-eBay because of their costs. And when the eBay started up, you could sell anything. You really could. And for good money. And then they split the categories up, and then they split the categories up, and then they split the categories up, and then it's all this, and there's so many people on there. It's just, it's just, I just can't get there. Well, 25% 25 of my money in was going to eBay at the very least, if not 30%. Etsy were a little bit cheaper than eBay. I think like eBay was like 13%, Etsy was 10%. Things like that, but they all charge crazy money. Now, bear in mind, I've put all these hours in, and I honestly, I have. I've done probably hundred hours some weeks, right? And the amount of nights, sleepless nights, I've had where I've had things going through my head, and I just got up and I just worked through the night, and then gone to work in the day. Um, and as as Peter has pointed out, under minimum wage, but as work, I'm willing to put in for the end goal. You know, I've got the vision at the end, and in the end, you know, it'll pay off. My sales are already there. Um, once I monetize the uh, blogs, but yeah, it's the fees are really bad. Peter, what I would say to you, right, genuinely, if you've done full time reselling for four years, you obviously got a love for it. Do the job you're doing now. Design yourself a cheap website. You can do, I think, it's Vista Print for nineteen pound a month, something like that. And literally, just by one item a week, if you can put five, ten pound, one pound. I've done videos showing some of the things you can buy for one and two pound on um, car boot sales. Buy one item a week, two items a week. Write one little article a week and put it on the website, and you watch it grow. And I guarantee you, right, if it takes two years, right, in two years' time, you'll actually have some, and you'll sit down and you think, Christ, that's not bad. You know, it's pulling in a bit of money. And at least then you'll be two years further along and closer to your dream. If you love it like I did, because I honestly, for me, reselling is everything. I absolutely love the antiques world. As I said, try it now. Stick the job you got. Keep the job you got. If you're happy, fine. But if you're not happy, keep the job you got and work and build a website on the side. Yeah, you'll be working for nothing. Does it matter? Because you're working for something. Give me a text, Gareth, and we'll uh, we'll have a chat. But I don't really don't like the part with my um, gold and silver. I really don't. But give me a text, and we'll see what we can do. Or message Facebook or on uh, the website. We'll do. I've actually had offers to buy the website. I had an offer to buy the website for 100000 within weeks of starting it up. And I was offered 200000 not that long ago, but I think there's seven, £800,000 worth of stock on there now. So that would never happen. I got Rolex watches on there, gold Alberts on there, 18th century glass on there. Just last night, um, I sold a single drinking glass, £300. Um, bear with me a second. I'll pull it up for you. There it is. Where's StreamYard gone? StreamYard. This I only sold yesterday. Um, oversized Georgian rummer. Out of stock, three hundred pounds. So the sales are good. I can't criticize on that. Uh, I would never take the um, sale unless I want to retire. Then I'd probably sell it as one giant thing. And if you did love reselling antiques, generally, have a go. I'm sure you can put £20 a month into a Vistaprint website or a GoDaddy website or Wix website and build a website and literally just do a little bit each week and eventually it'll add up. And don't worry if you don't give you results for two years. What have you wasted? £400 or £20 a month? It's nothing. Not if you're working towards a dream. It's a long haul, but it's one that will pay off. 
for a long period of time. When you do your work on eBay, if you stop listing on eBay or you shut your shop, within three months, they've deleted all your work. You've got to start again from scratch. Once you've done that work on the website, that works there forever. As long as you own that website and that domain, uh, just don't let your domain lapse, whatever you do, or somebody will buy your domain from under you. Um, you know, that works there permanent. And you can always back it up. The blogs are good. Um, I I got some blogs. Let me just share with you the blogs I got. I haven't got a lot of blogs on there. All right. Um, if I come here to my blogs. I've started a new blog today, as I well, this week, as I said, personal blog, uh, which is just my day-to-day -day life um, for people who follow the channel, like me, um, but I'm not that big on antiques. And then you got blogs I do, you know, what will happen to the antiques market, as uh, one year, how to restore silver plating, a complete guide to running your own business when I had the shop, uh, tips, how to identify sovereigns, book reviews. I got three pages of blogs. I didn't realize I had that many blogs on there. Um, I done one there on all the different reseller channels, brass, how to ship antiques, how to tell crystal from glass. That was a good one. Right, and what I do, just give you an idea, you got your table of contents down the side, what's glass made of, what's crystal made of, how to identify them, obsidian, how much is crystal worth, you know, you name it. I try and put as much information in the blogs as I can, so it drags people to the site. I haven't gone much longer, I got to uh, pick the baby up soon. Uh, where are we at? Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining in today, mate. I honestly appreciate it. There you go. I'll leave that there for a second for you. I don't make money from my blogs. My brother makes money from his blogs because it is advertised. He's got adverts. And if just very quickly, I'll come across and show you. So click on anyone, this one by here. Best water for plants. So you come down here. You've got an ad here already on the side, which I haven't loaded in for his work. There it is. Um, where's his adverts? This slow loading in. There's an advert by here. There's an advert there, just popped up. So he gets paid for his adverts. I don't, because I've got a problem with my site. My site was built with Elementor, and I've got to have work done on there. yeah with ebay as i said once you've done your work it's lost with the website is constant growth yeah i know love two seconds right i've got to go <laughs> i really have uh, I am so grateful thank you very much for everybody who've joined in today i really hope if you're interested in having a website watch a video it's you know, and I hope it's been some helpful things in there for you. But genuinely, I've done 100 hours a week. As Peter said, I've probably earned less than minimum wage. Not if you count my sales on my stock, but for the blogs and the building of the website, I've probably earned less than minimum wage. And you know what? I do it all again tomorrow. But thank you very much for joining me and watching. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel and go check out the website. Honestly, you'll be interested and shocked to see some of the stuff on there. But for now, thank you very much, and I'll see you soon.